What's crack a lack and welcome back to the I'm About It podcast. MJ here. Hopefully you guys had a lovely week and we have such an ambitious agenda ahead of us this episode this week. I have so much to talk about and you know I'm not just any girl on the internet. I'm a girl who would not only tell you her opinions without you know filter, without any cushion, without no soft landing. I'm gonna give you the facts, the hard-hitting facts like a journalist, you know what I mean? But I'm not a journalist, you know what I mean? I do feel like we're in a world where we just are craving the truth and transparency transparency is great and all, but let it be grounded in reality, you know what I mean? And that's what we're talking about today, kind of. Um, <laughs> we're so much to talk about. First of all, we got Universal Music pulling their music out of TikTok. We got uh, the Grammys, the coveted Grammys that just got, you know, aired on Sunday. And we, I also do want to talk about, if we do get to this, I would love, love, love to talk about um, Black Alex Earl, whatever that really means. If you are on social media on TikTok, then you guys know what I'm talking about. I'm trying to like be comfortable here. Maybe I can just sit. Okay, there we go. Okay, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you check me out on YouTube. I'm on YouTube. Why? Oh, YouTube. -E, YouTube. Where should we begin? As y'all know, like these topics are the ones that have been proliferated. That it's just taking space in my mind and it, and it's just exploded in the zeitgeist. So let's start with Universal Music. So Universal Music did, uh, you know, release a statement last week that said that they're pulling off all of the music, all of their artists' music off of TikTok because TikTok and Universal Music did not come up with a uh, actual an agreement. And so TikTok started muting, muting videos on TikTok because, you know, there is no agreement made with Universal Music Artists. So since there's no agreements, once the license ends, then, you know, we creators, normies, normal people can no longer use their music. So with that being said, let's see what's been going on with that. Um, it's so... It's so interesting because there's so much talk about here. But let me just say, if you don't know, the reason why this is such a big news is because TikTok really grew its platform off of very viral, very trendy, very 15 second, 10 second, you know, music clips. And it really did come off of the musically and off of Vine. So TikTok really came off of a very music heavy platform so tiktok you know has a lot of the big content creators right now came from musically and came from came from vine and so tiktok started off of a very music driven platform by having the content creators create very you know quick dances and you know pranks and lip singing battles you know on tiktok that really blew up the entire platform and really started and created a lot of creators that we know today so right now there is no universal music on tiktok what does that mean well umg said tiktok wanted to pay a fraction of the rate other social media sites do access do for access to its songs tiktok accused umg of presenting a false narrative and rhetoric which all created you know blew up and realized that you know they are not going to come to an agreement. There's no negotiation. Negotiation broke down. So that means that you can't listen to Billie Eilish, Taylor Swift, Katy Perry, Ariana Grande. You can't really listen to even The Weeknd all on TikTok. In fact, if you go to their music pages on all of these platforms, you would see that their music page has been muted. Now, I really do not agree that universal music should have you know did this because honestly tiktok really did make a lot of artists a lot of artists are now famous because of their reach on 
TikTok. Look at Money Long. You know Money Long. Nobody likes you. Nobody, no. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And now, you know, if there was no TikTok, then people weren't be able to make a viral, you know, dance, a viral video off of Money Long song. So with that being said, I do think that Universal Music should have created a subtype of agreement. That could have lasted for a bit before they created a more comprehensive agreement with TikTok only because this marketing portion of Universal's marketing portfolio really does benefit them and really does benefit their artists. In fact, some artists may even want to move to a different you know, um, music group because, you know, they're able to release their songs on TikTok. I know Ira, I think Ira, oh my God, I always forget her name, but the Afrobeat artist, the Afrobeat artist did release a statement on it. And you're going to probably hear a lot of people release a lot of, um, a lot of their opinions about this whole thing. And Ira Starr, which is, she's an Afrobeast artist, which I absolutely, you know, love right now. And I love, um, I just, I just love her music. She's just amazing. And she seems like a really sweet down to earth person, person. And you can't really say that for a lot of artists these days. And so right now, you know, you have, you know, people like Ira Starr, you know, coming out and being like, oh, that's not fair. You know, how could they do this? And it really does benefit the artists because it makes them go viral, makes people listen to their songs, to their music, to their streams, to then go buy albums. But if people, and, and the thing is, TikTok still has the a very successful component on making things go viral. No matter what you can say about TikTok, you can easily go viral on TikTok. But now YouTube is starting to have that type of formula too because you can also go viral on YouTube shorts on YouTube. So it's going to be an interesting thing to see because we'll see how Universal Music was now going to market their artists music if there is no tiktok what are you gonna what's gonna happen of course instagram has started to have this type of formula like tiktok tiktok has where you can really go viral on instagram now and i think it's bringing us back to old instagram I don't know what that's about. So if you're trying to grow your Instagram platform, now is the time. A lot of people have grown thousands of thousands of followers within days, actually, within a month. You know, I saw a girl who went to 10,000 followers in a month. It's insane. So maybe Universal Music Group will start using Instagram instead of TikTok to make their, make their artists go viral. Uh, but I do foresee that some artists will actually either change their agreement with universal music or make it so that they can you know the universal music contract with them will expire for you know that the expiry date will come sooner rather than later so they can you know market their music on tiktok because tiktok still has that virality so until universal music is able to show that to their artists and say hey you know you don't need tiktok to market your music market your brand then um, I think some artists will actually be really upset. I mean, I don't think, I think people forgot that Money Long is actually pr producing music and and Afrobeats, I don't think it wouldn't become mainstream as it is if it wasn't for platforms like TikTok. So I don't know what this is gonna look like for a lot of the artists that we see on TikTok. Um, it will, of course, allow more independent artists to rise. It will, of course, you know, allow TikTok creators to be more creative with their content and to really put thought into content without relying on music, which is, which is the path that TikTok wants all of us to be on these days. So I don't really know. And I think it would force a lot of us to rely on mainstream platforms and pillars like the Grammys, you know, the Grammys, I don't know how long the Grammys has been up and running, but let me just say I've never been a Grammys girl. I've never been a girl to really watch the Grammys. I think the only award show I've actually been into was the MTV Awards. But at, like, as I got older, I did you guys hear my stomach rumble? <laughs> as I got older, I honestly do not care about 
award shows, especially when the curtain has been pulled back and you've seen that, you know, artists uh, have actually paid for their awards through bribes, through dinners, through meetings, through smoozing, through, I don't know what it is. Um, and I'm, I really do want to talk about that. So the Grammys aired, you know, a few days ago and I didn't watch it. Honestly, did not. I am the type of person who watches after the fact, who watches the clips. And like I said, like the Grammys is one of those things, your award shows like three or four hours. Sometimes it's not pleasurable. Sometimes it's cringe. Like, I think this year was really good and really great. And a lot of artists did actually show up and a lot of artists did support each other. It looks like everybody's really going back to, you know, having the opportunity to be in the same room with other great artists and to be able to, you know, talk and mingle and, and network. So I think it's the artists are loving it. People are starting to like award shows. I think it's because now that music is taken off, a lot of the big artists anyway are taken off of TikTok you know our you know the award shows will give us an opportunity for us to see kind of like a glimpse into how artists perform on stage we don't really see that other than going to their concerts so for the normal person who doesn't can afford you know a concert ticket in today's economy you can be able to see their you know their performance you know, get a glimpse of how they think and what they like and what they want and their in-person, in-the-moment reaction when it comes to things. And I think people get a glimpse of that that we really don't see in social media. I know social media these days, it's very much, you know, people are quite open on social media these days, but I think we're coming to the, you know, point in social media where we want to really do gatekeep gatekeep some information and gatekeep parts of our lives um to protect those things and to ground ourselves so award shows allows us to get a glimpse of who the artist is inside and out so there are a couple of things about this year's 2024 grammy nominations let's start with the fact that the i think the ceo of the record academy said that afro beats is a pop genre now let me just say I am a new Afrobeats fan, meaning the last three to four years. My sister, on the other hand, is a is a hardcore. Like she's been listening to it. She's about few years. I like to say few, but she's like five or six years younger than me. She's been listening to it for like 10, 12 years. So she's hardcore. So I just want to look at this. So I def definitely want to talk about this, and I definitely want to hear this whole, like, discuss this whole point of afrobeats being a pop genre and i don't understand that and i want to talk about what the record academy um what he said about it the rolling stones also created an and and um a thing about this last year as well and i'm just want to pull up that um that article i heard that that the record academy which is in charge of pulling ballots and listing the nominations for the Grammys have been, you know, really controversial over the years. In fact, they haven't been, in, which I will talk about. So the CEO of the Grammys has said that it is a pop genre, which I really do not understand. So they said, uh, so this is a BBC article. So Harvey, Harvey Mason Jr. said he's excited at the inclusion of the Best African Music Performance category. Tyla Ira Starr, so the one we just talked about a few minutes ago, Burna Boy, David L., you know, the big leagues, are among the nominated artists. While their work is celebrated, some critiques say an award for African music should have been included a long time ago. Well, duh. Uh, Ian Brennan. A, a Grammy Award winning record producer who has worked with several ar African artists told the BBC that while all this was progress, it was long overdue. So dumb. African artists have won Grammys in the past. South African Miriam Makaba was the first in 1966 when she picked up the prize for best folk recording for her collaboration with Harry Balafontaine. There have been several others, including Nigerian Burna Boy, who won in 2021 for Best Global Music Album. 
But for Mr. Brennan, the Grammys have long had a blind spot for music from the continent. There, and this is what Mr. Brennan, you know, states, the music producer. There are no African artists in the Lifetime Achievement Award area of the Grammys, he said. The decision to include Africa specific award came from because music from the continent is now prevalent everywhere in the world. Mr. Mason Jr., who was CEO of the Recording Academy, which I have issues with, told the BBC's Newsday program, he became the first black person to be in the charge of the Grammys Awards in 2021 and has been working to better represent the breadth of popular music. He admitted that the Grammys considered to be among the most prestigious music awards typically honors American music, but he added that the awards are fluid, adjusting and pivoting, and they are trying to include music outside of the West. This year's Grammys ceremony in LA will also feature a performance from Burner Boy, who will be the first Afrobeat performer ever to do so. So I don't really understand like this whole thing about calling it pop. I really do not understand. And I've been trying to research this because I, I particularly do not get it. And I think it's because it's African music, there are different types of African music. The way I understand it is different types of African music. The African, the African music that we all know from Burner Boy, David O. I'm unavailable. They don't see me. Last, last. You know what I mean? Our, our very mainstream African music. I think that's what he's trying to say. It's like the whole argument with Drake, where people are saying that Drake's music, it is hip hop. Some of you can say rap. He says he's a rapper. Uh, but people are saying that it could be pop because of how mainstream and how it really relates to a lot of different people in the world. I agree and disagree. The African music found the music of the foundation of the music of these artists are African based. I don't know if I would consider it African pop because there are African pop out there. Um, I don't really understand that. So let's see if we can find a, a genre or some explanation and, and you know into this you know i don't really understand this so i'm going to try to see if we can pull up something here so in wikipedia unlike afrobeat which is clearly defined genre wikipedia says afrobeats is more of an overreaching term for contemporary west african pop music the term was created in order to package these various sounds into a more easily accessible label, which were unfamiliar to the UK listeners where the term was first coined. That's so interesting to me. I don't, I don't know. And maybe because I am African, I would never categorize this genre of music as pop. But what do I know? I mean... Apparently, I don't know much. So let's see here. I just have my computer. Um, so, Afro, so Wikipedia is saying Afrobeats is an umbrella term to describe popular music from West Africa and the Dysphoria that initially developed in Nigeria, Ghana, and in the UK. In the 2000s and 2010s, Afrobeats is less of of a style per se and more of a description for the fusion of sounds following majority out of Nigeria. Genres such as hop life, juju music, high life and Nijab beats among others were amalgamated under the Afrobeats umbrella. If you understand the whole Drake argument that people had had in the last few few weeks ago when people were saying or or the famous podcaster who said that drake drake's music or maybe you've heard of it drake's music is not really hip-hop it's more pop then it's kind of like that with afrobeats music but i do listen to african artists 
who put out Nija music and it, in a Nija beats and I would say it's considered it's considered to be it, I feel like it's a bit more nuanced is what I'm trying to say so we're we're gonna conclude on this topic and I'll come back in future episodes but I'm, I'm, we're gonna say I agree and disagree yes it is more digestible for people outside of Africa who, or outside of the genre who don't usually listen to the music to enjoy but it's still grounded in in these um genres that I said so Nija Nija beats hip life juju music um it, the inspiration and the basis is still there so I don't I disagree I disagree it's it's too easy for you to say that oh my god it's just pop it's not um it can be considered pop. It can be considered, you know, the genre, which is African music, Afrobeat. So it's interesting. I've never heard, of course, but any anybody who is in the Western world would, would call it, you know, would call it pop music. I disagree. Just how you would disagree that, you know, Drake isn't a pop music which i agree with i i do agree that drake is hip-hop so that's just interesting so that leads me to tyla so when they introduced tyla in the grammys baby boy and baby girls now they did not play tyla's music they play they played another afrobeats another african artist rather and um that's what i guess you one would call like a traditional african music well she was getting up there to accept her award and it wasn't her music but it was <laughs> everybody's ripping that on on tiktok as well so i do not agree that tyler should have won i'm sorry i also do not agree the category was robust to include the songs that were played this year as well so even looking at the list for those categories for afrobeat songs of the year african songs of the year Maybe the one with um, the one with um, either uh, Burner Boy or Fire Fire Boy um, are the are the songs I would have chosen to win, but not Tyler's song. Tyler's song was very good, and and yes, South Africa still means Africa. You still in Africa? Like people are saying that too. That's disgusting. Don't say that. Tyla's really talented, but I don't really don't think she deserves the award. I really do think that her time is coming, yes, and she her time is her time is here, but not for this song. I do think she should have gotten best dance TikTok song of the year, but not best African song of the year. You know, like I'm sorry, it's just not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have done that. I agree with what Jay Z said. And before we go into what JC said when he accepted the Dr. Dre Award, let's talk about Taylor Swift. I love me some Taylor. I love me some Taylor songs. Let me just preface what I'm going to say by saying I love Taylor. I love Taylor songs. I don't love all the songs. Because to me, like, I, f I personally feel like a lot of people out there that Taylor hasn't done the work to really develop her range as an artist. When it comes to her music, she sings in the same voice, but with different in different genres and with different lyrics okay like i'm sorry like i'm i still love taylor swift i do think she's a prodigy i do think she's a genius i do think she's an incredible talented songwriter and she knows how to brand a brand she knows how to market herself but i do not think that she should have gotten album of the year especially for that album Ta beyonce should have been nominated again again let me say that again beyonce should have nominated again and she should have gotten it between her sizza and 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 um, janelle i do not think taylor should have won that and for her to go up there and to then say that you know and then bring up lana it's so awkward i did i did post my thoughts on this on tiktok and my tiktok is going viral which okay it is my opinion, you know, like the way Taylor Swift moves just acts as if like she's just unaware of of how 
she makes other people feel or unaware of her actions. Like, look, I know I understand you're in, you're in the moment, but, and I can put away the Celine Dion thing. Like, okay, you're in the moment. Oh my God, you are genuinely shocked that you got this award. But for you to bring up Lana when she honestly is trying to get the award, like she wants that award. She wants to get recognized like you're getting recognized for her to bring up it's kind of insensitive kind of condescending and just like and then for you to announce your war your new album in front of a group of people your peers again awkward awkward i saw a comment which I, which, I, which, I, which i saw which i said in the tiktok video i saw a comment in i saw a comment in the a TikTok video which basically said what Taylor Swift did when she announced her next album while she was getting her award is like announcing to a wedding party at the reception that they're getting married at someone else's wedding like it's really it's you don't do that it's really weird it's awkward Taylor Swift seems like a really nice person she seems genuine-ish but after watching her documentary um that she posted like a while back i don't know five six seven years she doesn't seem quite genuine like she doesn't seem she seems like not too genuine but like, i yeah. she seems like she seems like everyone's is, is, is obsessed with her but we're but they're not only your fans are so she i don't know how to explain it like she has to I know she probably isn't like the nicest person. She is probably the nicest person, but I just feel as if she doesn't seem genuine to me. She seems a bit self-absorbed, you know? Anyways, I'm done talking about Taylor Swift, but like that's just my my whole thing on that. And Miley Cyrus, I love me Miley. Miley should have been nominated for a long, 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 I'm sorry, long time ago. The fact that that girl waited this long to get a Grammy is insane is insane why didn't she get a grammy for the climb or for the wrecking ball i do not understand you know what i mean i don't get it i don't get it i don't i don't like miley's dress but it was but it, it's it's it is what it is you know what i mean but i liked her dress when she performed flowers i don't even, i'm not even a big fan of flowers in fact i just think that the recorded company is just giving her this award because flowers is the song that was everywhere this year not because it was good but like molly once she sang when she started singing hannah montana i'm sorry like she that girl should have got a grammy a long time ago like isn't like she is her son's daughter you feel me like i don't i never i don't get it i don't get it and that's what i and that's what i'm seeing like and that's and that's kind of the trend for the grammys this year is Whoever have been viral, whoever has had more private presence, it's, are the people who are winning. Tyla, Water, Miley Cyrus, Flowers, Taylor Swift's album, her tour. So it's not because it was good, it's because that there was a lot of presence. Everybody was talking about it. I mean, and their artists, those are the artists are great, but should they have won for that category? No, right? That's just my professional opinion. I do agree, Jay-Z. Some of them shouldn't have won. Some of them shouldn't have been nominated. And some of them, not even nominated, should have won. You know what I mean? So it's just really awkward. And yes, I agree that Beyonce should have been, should have got album of the year for Renaissance, for Lemonade, for some of her, all, her earlier albums. It doesn't make any sense. So look, I mean... I've always said this and that's why I don't watch award shows because it's all posturing. It's all very performative. It's all, you know, these people in big wigs and rich people who think that they know best, which they don't. And picking a winner for this type of category um, uh, amongst millions of other people and telling others that you can as well do this, you know, it ha the, 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 the criteria to win has to be objective. The criteria to win has to be... So it, it can't be based on fanfare. It can't be based on virality. It has to be based on your ability to... Is there something in my nose? Oh my God, I really know. God, I hate that. 
it has to be based it has to be based on if, is there something my mom's on i swear to god i'll be so upset let me see if i can let me see if i can actually pull up my um little computer camera here anyways um <laughs> so it has to be based it has to be based on something that is that is not subjective subjective that is objective um oh i don't see anything in my notes okay good there has to be a criteria like why it should be based on how you've done well in the past and how you're doing better how you've impacted your own genre the range and there should be some objective criteria there like why are these grammys based on virality and fanfare i don't under it doesn't make any sense to me it should be based on you know your voice and how the music comes together maybe even the hard work you put into it the meaning you know some thought like all of that let let that be the criteria and it never made any sense to me i don't know and and uh, that's probably the reason why i probably am not gonna watch the grammys but this super bowl is coming up and you all know how i am when it comes to super bowl which you don't you know okay a super bowl if you don't know is an american football you know national event we basically have it as you know a holiday I don't watch football but i do watch the halftime show so i'm gonna get my snacks so i'm gonna get, get my drinks and watch the commercials and watch the halftime because that's what i'm gonna do baby girl now i just realized i had a new segment that i'm gonna introduce so the um topic of the, the black alex girl alex earl we're gonna talk about that in next week's video and other topics that i'm really interested to in talk about let's talk about the TV show. So we're going to do TV show or movie of the week. I think that's really good. Mm, I kind of ate my dinner before this. And I'm actually interested in eating some popcorn. Like some caramel popcorn. I'm really excited. I need to make that. I'm making caramel from scratch at home. Yeah, you should be jealous. Now, the best TV show or movie that I've watched this week is Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I'm sorry. I'll be crying to Amazon. And I'm going to be begging them to create season two and three. There should be at least two more seasons of this, if not just at least one more, because it is so freaking good. It's like a romantic comedy wrapped around spy espionage action stuff and the acting, the casting, the plot is you are literally enthralled you are literally gripped from beginning to end i love it so much and i am so impressed by donald um, glover usually when we see donald glover we see him in a character that i really do not feel like he should be in um but so he he does have range and i feel as if we get to know who donna glover is on a personal level through this show i don't know maybe it's just me the incredible casting of this show provided a bit more depth and layers to the show that you know we needed to allow the show to like creep on until the end and i'm just impressed by Donna Glover. I'm impressed by the writer, the director, the casting, the music. I'm impressed at how elevated it is. I'm impressed that it is written from a millennial to millennials. And we don't have a lot of millennial TV shows and movies out there. I'm going to be honest. A lot of it is about, you know, Gen Z, which we get it we love they're smart whatever <laughs> um a lot of it is about baby boomers but millennials like for the millennial audience so people millennials are writing content but they're not written for millennials they're written for a different generation so i love how millennials are writing stuff for their own generation a lot of like a couple of shows that it reminds me of that is um insecure there's another HBO show that I, that that reminds me of, and it also reminds me of Gina Rodriguez's movies in her production company, 
um the movie that she was in recently on netflix that rom those rom-com movies even the one that's coming out february 14th another millennial written for millennials we're from a millennial point of view right um from jane the virgin if you get, yes that's right it's the girl from jane the virgin so i am just need more of that and Don Donald Glover's like stuff is like freaking incredible. <laughs> Just need more of that, baby. Like pay him, like pay him the bag, pay him the check. So that is my movie and TV show of the week. And you should guys should go watch it. It's on Amazon Prime. It is uh, a TV show, so there are many episodes, but it's a limited series. I don't think it's a limited series, obviously, because obviously I, I want Amazon to make more, like I said in the beginning. But I do think that it's about ten episodes itch like i was literally crying at the end like i literally did not want this tv show to end like i wanted it to, to carry on and on and on and on and on because it's so smart it's so beautifully woven together and i love it so much that i want them to just continue on and yeah and donald glover went to go ask freaking the old mr smith from mr and mrs smith that movie what's his name um brad pitt please you don't need to ask anybody donald you did a great job you did an amazing job sit on business sit on business stop we love brad pitt but like like this is this tv show yes the premise is based on it so mr and mrs smith they're married and they're spies but they're not spies against each other they're spies against the rest of the world they're working the same agency and yes, they do fall out at the end. And so just go watch it. It's really good. I'm sorry. Like right now, that's the best TV show of the year. And probably will be until the end of the year. Because what can compare? Nothing. So that is my first 10 out of 10 TV show. You usually like TV shows are usually not 10 out of 10. Like y'all know, I usually give like 9 out of 10. So this is a 10 out of 10 show you need to go watch. Okay, okay. That's it for this week's episode of I'm, I'm About It. It's It's been a lot. And... Hopefully I brought some context to to a couple of things. And I really do think that um, the award shows are back. Like they were away for a bit, for a few years. And, you know, but I think people are rooting for their award shows again. Again, I think now they're going back to a bit before viral TikTok, you know, fame world. That we want our MTV Cribs back. We want our you know award shows back we want you just want old school stuff like we're all nostalgic so hopefully i brought you some little context a little you know company and don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like don't forget to leave a review don't forget to do all those things and if you're listening to me don't forget i'm on youtube and if you're on youtube i am on spotify so check me out on spotify i am trying to put my podcast on all platforms i'll try to get that out this weekend um but usually that takes a couple of weeks for that to be active so i'll let you know i'll see you guys next week bye